What's up guys? You see a lot of fun music gear on my channel, but you don't need a lot to get started with music production. If you're putting together a home studio, you can begin with just a few items. Here's my list of the essentials, everything you need to start making music. I'm also gonna reveal the one piece of music gear that has made the biggest impact in my studio setup. First, you'll need a computer. I use a 2018 MacBook Pro. It's got a 2.7 gigahertz i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, and two terabytes solid state drive. But you really don't need the latest and greatest. If you get a computer with an i5 processor and eight gigabytes of memory, you're off to a really great start. If you spend more money on upgrading the specs, I suggest adding more RAM. Next is a digital audio workstation or DAW, like Ableton or Logic. A DAW lets you record multiple tracks, instruments, and then mix and arrange them into a song. It's going to be the center of your music workstation. I use Logic sometimes, but mostly Ableton. They basically do the same thing. But there are a lot of inexpensive options out there like Reaper if you're using Windows and some free ones for Mac like GarageBand. Most DAWs come with a bunch of different sounds built in so you can get started making music right away. Everyone wants to spend their next pile of cash on speakers, also called studio monitors. But honestly, you can wait. A good set of headphones goes a long way. I use the Biodynamic DT770 Pro headphones. They cost about $150 and sound incredible. More importantly, whatever headphones you get, once you learn how to adjust your mix with them, you can get pretty good results even without expensive speakers. Whatever you get, it's always good to check your song on different speakers, headphones, earbuds, and even computer speakers, whatever you have laying around. <laughs> I start creating a lot of songs on the train during my commute, and I actually begin a lot of them by using the computer keyboard like a piano. You can do this in most DAWs. But a MIDI keyboard is gonna make things easier and more expressive. Now I get this question a lot, so let me clarify. Most MIDI keyboards are controllers only meaning they don't make any sounds on their own. You connect them by USB to your computer and they send signals to your software, which then generates the sounds which you hear through your speakers. This is actually a good thing because you'll be able to add more sounds through software instruments later. And there are some amazing software instruments out there. There are so many options for MIDI keyboards, but if you're looking for something small to get started with, I recently posted a video reviewing some of the best choices available right now. So check it out over here. Now let's pause here for a second. You can get a lot done with the stuff I've just mentioned. And if you're just getting started, this is really a good place to begin. But there are more things you can add, so keep watching. If you're finding this helpful, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more reviews, tutorials, music production tips, and gear. All right, up next, if you're a vocalist or a guitarist, or you just need to get some sort of external sound into your computer, you're gonna need an audio interface. I use the Focusrite 2i4. It lets me connect a microphone, an electric guitar, or a hardware synthesizer, and works with my DAW to get those sounds into my computer. The way you do this is by connecting your audio interface to your computer. Next, in your DAW, select the audio interface as the input and output device. To connect a microphone, plug it into the audio interface. Once you've done that, you can start recording directly into your DAW. Now, if you wanna go higher end, I like the UAD Apollo interfaces. If you're interested in how the UAD compares with the Focusrite, check out my video here. Now, I use the Shure SM7B mic with my audio interface. Audio-Technica makes some great affordable condenser microphones as well. There are a few USB microphones out there which allow you to record sounds without an audio interface. I reviewed the Rode NT-USB in a video here. I know I keep sending you to other videos, but it really depends on what you need more details on, so go check them out. Now, once you've got your audio interface, now you're really gonna want speakers. Let's talk about studio monitors. I'm using the PreSonus Aris 4.5s, which are small monitors for a really great price. If you're on a budget, I highly recommend this setup. I paired them with the PreSonus subwoofer, the Tembler T8. Studio monitors let you hear your sound with as little coloration as possible. This means you're getting a more neutral sound that will sound pretty good 
on different speakers. That's really the purpose of studio monitors. Now there's always more gear you could add depending on your needs. Software plugins, which add more instrument sounds or effects to your arsenal, or drum pads like the Machina Micro Mark III if you like finger drumming, and even external synths for hands-on control. So what have you added to your studio that's made all the difference? Leave a comment below to share your studio recommendations. So which of these pieces of gear has made the biggest impact in my studio? If you'd recommended this to me a few years ago, I probably wouldn't have put my money into it. I probably would have spent it on plugins or something else, but this has improved my sound immensely. It's my Biodynamic headphones. Now, Biodynamic is not paying me to say this. I bought these myself and I would buy them again. An excellent set of studio headphones lets you hear your mix differently. There's so much I don't hear from my studio monitors. Little imperfections in the sound, the tone of the bass line, and the stereo width of individual sounds. They sound different on headphones, and I'm able to tweak my mix a lot faster when I'm using headphones in addition to the monitors. Not to mention that I'm also improving the sound for people who are listening with their headphones. A few months ago, my dog actually chewed up the cable and I begged my cousin to repair them because I don't want any other headphones and I'm certainly not cheaping out on them. If you're really interested in these biodynamic headphones, I have links to purchase these as well as all my other music gear in the description of the video. I hope you found that information useful. Whatever your studio setup is, remember Remember to make the music that you love and share it. That's the best way to keep improving your craft. I'll see you guys later.